Hi everybody. Just thought I'd run through setting up a cell builder for you. I've got this big double box here to make into a cell builder that I'll be grafting from tonight. So again, hope you enjoy the video. So before I release Merry Hell in the apiary down here, I just thought I'd, uh, not that it is bad, I thought I'd just run through what I've done first. So this is a double Dadon box, so it's 10 frames on 10 frames, okay, with a fully ventilated base and a normal roof and nothing on the top at the moment, just the 10 frames and 10 frames. So this, this part here was a normal colony that was strong. Now I did check it before I put another 10 frames on top of it. I checked for queen cells, there was none this time, okay, none at all. I then put a queen excluder on here. There's a queen excluder there, you can't see it, but there is one there. I added 10 frames of brood from other colonies that I harvested from. Okay, so those other colonies that are my uh, nuke factories, they're all around here. I let them get a bit strong. I continuously harvest brood from them. So that has given me 10 frames over 10 frames. The 10 over 10 method. And what that does is this brood will hatch out and augment the nurse bees that are in there. But because I've got a queen excluder there, between the bottom and the top, the queen can't come up and lay in here. So there's going to be no larvae in there. There actually might be a bit of brood because I think we're about to day seven or day eight, but I need to graft today because um, otherwise I'm going to be short of cells. But because this was a cell builder before and I'm stocking it for the second time, this is already going to be strong. So while I'm doing my first and second load of grafts in the next two or three days, those other nurse bees will be hatching out and adding to this top box. So in a moment, I'm going to take the bottom box away and put it to one side. And in that bottom box will be the queen. So it becomes a queenless colony. This top box takes its place on a new base. And that top box becomes hopelessly queenless. Hopelessly queenless because there's no eggs and larvae that will enable the colony to make a new queen of their own. And they will only be able to make one with the larvae that I give them. And they'll be so overwhelmingly begging for a larvae that they'll be flying around here, crying, calling, they'll be on the front of the box, it'll be a complete and utter mess. And I'll give them my larvae tonight and they'll be so begging to drop those larvae and they'll be so desperate because the nurse bees that are in there are already making raw jelly. They can exude it really quickly. And because they've had nothing to feed, because they've had uh, up to this point now, they've been feeding larvae in the bottom box. And up to this point now, they'll, they'll have to stop in an hour or so, they'll have to stop feeding because there'll be nothing for them to feed. Because the majority of nurse bees will be in this top box as well as the field bees bringing food in. So there'll be a huge supply of food. There'll be nurse bees that can't feed anything. So what happens as soon as you put your grass in, bang and that's what happens and that's why I get good acceptance and that's why when people ask me do you do anything to your cups when you graft I say no and the reason why I don't need to because those nurse bees are so primed and so full of raw jelly and so full of proteins to exude into those cells that basically they accept anything so that's what you've got to remember. This is what we're, why we're setting, up, setting it up as hopelessly queenless. Any box you make can be hopelessly queenless. It doesn't have to be a double box, but it helps by having two boxes because it just simplifies things. It means that this can be the box that will be without larvae, and this can be the normal colony that continues working. So it just makes it logical. And so I take this bottom box away. I take the queen excluder off. This top box becomes the only box in this place and all the field bees come back to the same place and every other bee come back to the same place because it's the only place they know. But I'll leave just enough bees in the bottom box to cover the brood and larvae that's there. Excuse me, that went up my nose. So I'm going to cover up now. We're going to get on with this and I'll explain. But today is day one of a grafting day, but it's day 10 since I added the brood. Well, actually it's day seven, but if you work on 10 days, all that will have hatched out. If you see my video, the cell builder explained, it explains it all in there as well, but I do it in a different way sometimes, so it enables people to have another look at it in a different concept. So time I got dressed, time I got my kit on, and let's get this done. So we've not got a lot of room here. All this is packed full of bees, but I've got one space here. So what I'm gonna do is this bottom box will be spun around, facing the other way, 
and the exit will be at least, say, two foot away from the previous entrance. So the bees are naturally going to come to this side to look to find where their colony has gone. And they'll find a box that looks the same on a new base that looks the same. So they're just going to, all the field bees and all the bees that can fly are going to go into there. So there's no issue. As long as you move it off the place it's in and you face the entrance the other way, all the bees will fly back to this part. And that's why it's such a good thing because you only get what can fly back to that box and only what you put in it. So you can completely control it. So let's get on. So one important, so one important you always need to have is your hive tool, you need a queen clip, which you put in your pocket there, because that's when you need that queen clip, you've got it handy. So I just put it in the top there. Okay, so I've got it to grab. You have to wear gloves because you're handling a lot of bees and otherwise it can get messy and you get stung. You don't want to get stung. The bees are going to be grumpy initially, okay? And you need your smoker well charged because you need a lot of smoke. You also need your shaker box, which I've got here ready. It'll all become chaotic. We need a spare base, which I've got there ready. Let's just get on. So let's put this spare roof away for the moment on other boxes. A lot of bees in here, completely full. That'll be mostly hatched larvae now, but I'm going to go through this box again after and check for queen cells like I always do, because you cannot have a cell in a cell builder. Because if one of these cells that might have been made before hatches out before my cells hatch out, or my cells are ready, I should say, then it will destroy the cells that are there, okay? So let's take this box off. It's probably going to weigh a ton. This is one of the downsides of cell building with big boxes, is that you end up with a lot of weight which isn't actually too bad. So for the moment, I'm actually gonna put this box the other side because that means I can then leave that against there for now. It's a bit not the best way of doing things, but actually let's leave that excluder on for the moment. Just turn this around this way. So that now is facing the opposite way and all the bees are going to want to come back to here now, but there's nothing there for them. So let's find a base. Got a base over here. Remember, you put your base exactly the same place as it was before. Exactly. So then this goes on top there. Instantly you've made this box hopelessly queenless. Because where's the queen? She's in this box next to it. So what do we do first? First we need to check for cells because you cannot have a cell in a cell builder. Like I said before. And why might we have a cell in this box? Well we might have a cell in this box because when you elevate brood above an excluder or when you elevate larvae above an excluder the queen can't get to the top of the box and her pheromone generally stays in the bottom box. This is what we think. And it's one of the reasons. And then what happens? Bees come along and they think, oh, there's no queen up here. She's gone. She's disappeared. So they make emergency cells. And where are the emergency cells? They're made in the larvae with the larvae that you put in there, first of all. It's all about understanding biology. So there's quite a bit of brood here still, which I knew there would be. Let's see if we can find any queen cells. None on that one. That's a nice clean frame, good. That one can come out. There's a few cells, a few, one or two larvae in, but I'll put this in another colony to use it for figs. It's full of feed as well. But that will come out for now. Put that over here. So I need obviously a space for my pollen frame and my graft. But I'm also adding, adding a pollen, uh, pollen patty today as well because I've got them and I'm going to use them. A little bit of brood on that one. Shake the bees off. 
a little bit of emerging brood, that one can stay in there still. Same on that one, it's all emerging. What will happen is I'll get a good take or a reasonable take the first day and the second day, you can see those emerging bees there. The second day, it'll be even better because often when you do a graft, it's the second or third graft that actually work out to be the best. No cells, full of nectar, just emerging brood. And little nurse bees that have just been born, you can see their color is like a, a, almost a white, like a baby covered in muconium, just out the womb. But this is out the, out the cell. There's a cell, lovely. This is what I wanted to see. There's your queen cells. I could cut these out and use them, but why? What's the point? You see how this is getting a bit to the point of where it's going to be hatching in about three days. They've made a cap on the base of it. Okay, I want to cut these off. I'll have a look at them after and I'll steal the raw jelly out of them because I love raw jelly. But there you go, that's what you want to look for. Queen cells, nothing in that one. That's just an empty cup. You've got to get every cell. You've got to shake all the bees off. Still a bit more brood emerging, but not much. These are broodless, becoming broodless. That one's got a couple of days to go yet. They're just emerging, emerging in a pattern across the frame there. But it doesn't matter, that's fine. A lot of brood coming on that one. It's all emerging from the inside out. And what does that tell you? That when the queen lays, she always starts in the middle. Because that's where the previous brood emerges from. So the queen lays in there. And if you want to find if a queen has swarmed or not, you go to a frame of emerging brood and that's where you're going to find eggs in most cases. If it's full of nectar and there's no eggs in the space that is there, the queen's gone. So basically she's not in the colony. That's one of the sure ways of telling. If you see eggs straight away, you know you've got a queen. Just nectar. A couple of drone larvae there. This frame can come out too. That's brilliant. I've got two frames now that are free. That can come out so let's make let's get this configuration right then we'll start shaking brood and uh, shaking bees in from the colony next door with the shaker box you've got to get your nutrition right you've got to get a good pollen frame or make one okay that's so important so this is all good that's fine that's fine that's fine this one isn't quite correct at the base it's because the bottom isn't in properly there we go Right. If you didn't guess, I love cell building. Because you get awesome results and you can only get out exactly what you put in. So that's my cell builder ready. That's the configuration ready. So now I need my shaker box because I'm going to shake bees from this colony into this one. This was the colony that was underneath. This is the queen right section. So we put a shaker box on with an excluded base. There's the excluded base. On goes the shaker box. So you've got to be doubly careful. Remember, it's not just one queen you're looking for. In fairness, there might be one or two or even three queens in a colony that are roaming around. They might be super CG queens. They might be waiting to swarm and the bees might have compartmentalized them, which they do. They hold the queens in corners sometimes. So this is packed full of bees. So I'm going to shake off probably about two thirds of these bees to add to this box. And it's a good way of assessing how your current colony is as well. Brood and eggs, that's good. That's what I wanted to see. I know the queen's in here. There's eggs in here that are very recent. And your brood. Sometimes you don't see the queen because she's on the last couple of frames. And I don't like that. I'd always like to see the queen, to be honest. Dig these out. Can I just see her then? She's more likely to be on these middle frames, but could honestly be anywhere. 
these bees are actually really calm today. And I think it's because we've got a gorgeous day of calm, sunny weather and it's warm. See so if we can see her. I've seen her before because I got her out the last time that I made this colony up to a cell builder. And this one actually performed really well. So, what you do is get used to flicking your bees off the sides. And you can use a bit of smoke, but I prefer just to, to flick the bees off. You can use a bee brush. Because once the bees know they can go back down through the bottom, they usually do. Okay, I can't see her yet. You can spend ages looking for her on the frame, but to be honest, it takes too long. You're better off just shaking bees straight into the box, and you know then that she'll, you'll, she'll turn up in the box. Or a queen, or multiple queens, or the queen. You know, it's just not worth spending time going, is she on here? Oh, did I miss her? Because you will. Just shake it in the box, and everything's off the frame. You haven't got time to do that. You know? Right. So that's extra bees added to this starter. It's going to become hopelessly queenless. No, she might not be here. And if I don't find her in the box there, sometimes I've shaken it through twice and still not found her. So we'll see what happens. A little bit of smoke. Just to move these down. See if I can find the queen. Don't forget that we're on a hot sunny day today so there's a lot of bees out foraging which is great because it makes my life so much easier here because there's no angry fo uh, forager bees having a go at me and they're all pretty gentle this lot. So as it looks at the moment we have no queen at this current time which doesn't bother me but I like I prefer to see her than I know she's in that box so I'm going to look at these frames and have a quick look in here see if I can see her because I need to know where she is. I can't bo be bothered to start a starter up knowing she's floating around and not doing what she's supposed to be doing. In other words, destroying my cells. So I've left three frames here of bees and brood. This queen probably isn't marked, but it doesn't usually bother me because they're easy to find. So. And we're now mid, mid to late spring and or early summer almost and our queens could be anywhere because the colonies are so big and the, the nests even at the ends where the honey was originally they're now on into dearth mode because we've got our gap and they'll they rapidly fill up everything with brood and nest and nests I mean look at how can you find a queen in that I mean it's almost impossible but I'm looking anyway because I believe she probably is here somewhere This is where it's annoying, where you, you waste time because you're looking for a queen you don't know's there. I've screened out the rest. She could be anywhere in the hive. She could be on the wall inside the bottom of the hive, but you still have to really look just to satisfy your curiosity. And if I'm not happy and I don't see the colony behaving itself, then I will still shake the whole lot through, through the shaker box again, just in case she flew. And that's the way you're guaranteed to get cells. And also, because I'm not leaving these generally, I harvest my cells after 24 hours then put them in finishes and because I do that I remove a bigger risk of a virgin a stray virgin coming in in this mating yard here and killing those cells that are in there because a virgin will do that overnight one virgin goes in and it'll kill the rest so if you do remove them the straight away the following day or after six hours of being in a strong starter then you remove that risk but also you imagine if you waited four days you're losing four days of production before you found out that that, that the virgin got in so it's a win-win Did I chase her around the box to here? 
There's no cells on this frame, but I think I probably chased her back into this part of the box. Because last time I shook this out, I remember now that I actually found the queen on the first frame I pulled out, and now she would be on the last frame if she was here. But I think she's in the box there somewhere. Notice how there's hardly any problem with bees today because all the forager bees are out. So anyway, I don't know where the queen is. She hasn't turned up in the box. So this is what happens in reality. Okay? So I'm look at this other frame one more time. Because she might have walked back on it. Okay, she's not in there. So I think she's in there somewhere, but probably on the side somewhere of the wall of the frames. I'm going to check the shaker box again. Have another look. Did I miss her? Is she somewhere else? Well, was she missing? No, I don't think so, because there's no emergency cells in the box. I'm pretty sure she's here. Just something to be aware of. Okay, there's no queen in here for sure. So now I'm gonna basically re um, replace the cover of the other box. I've just shaken the bees from, okay. That now is a unique independent colony and it's as though it's had an artificial swarm carried out on it because we've moved it away from its original place and all the forager bees are now returning to here but most of them are actually out anyway foraging. So let's just take this off, have a last look, some dead drones in there, the drones never last long, no queen. I'll go there for now. Now we've got the cell builder that's nice and full. And as all the forager bees come back, they'll start piling up on the front. So that's ready now. That's technically a hopelessly queenless cell builder, okay? So we'll just run through that again. Why is it hopelessly queenless? Because there's been no eggs and no larvae in this box, and there's no way a queen could have laid into that. And that's why there was some queen cells that I cut out in this box that was originally on the queen right section. The queen couldn't get up and do that. It's the fundamental best way to make any cells is rely on this method of making it strong but hopelessly queenless. And then you get great cells drawn up in the emergency method, but also in the swarming method, because it's the only one you give them. So now tonight, I'm going to, um, Put, a, put the grafts in this evening. I'm going to put a pollen frame in here and I'm also going to put a pollen patty on this top frame and then I'm going to put the feeder on. So they've got maximum nutrition. I know the forecast for tomorrow is great which is even better because they'll draw up anything I put in. But I'm just getting it ready now so and they'll become hope they're actually they've changed their manner now but I think they're feeling this is already queenless within 20 minutes of starting. And they'll then draw this up. If I think there's a queen in there and they're not they're not or not aggressive if they're not disorientated and wondering what's going on and lost their queen this evening when I put the grass in, I'll shake the whole lot for a shaker box again. But you've got to be sure you know where your queen is because if you can't find her and you put your grass in, you just might as well just go home and give up the day job because if you don't do this properly at the start, it's a waste of time. All starter box, swarm box starters and queen right finishes must be queenless. There you go. I hope that's a bit of fun. That's just how I set mine up dead easy to do. I'll, I will then harvest these grafts tomorrow and then put a next load in and I'm usually the next lot gives me even more take but I'll probably put 
say 50 grafts in here tonight and end up with about 35 to, to 40, which is perfect because then they'll go into some of these finishes that are ready to take the, the bees for fin the, the cells for finishing. So it removes that risk of the, any virgin queen flying and destroying them. Now I'm going to cover this over. What I like to use as well is I like to use a frame, frame box cover, um, and, but in, in, with an inverted lid, so I can actually put my pollen sub, pollen patty on top of the frames, and it will be, it can sit on top here. So I do that, put that like that now. Come back later. The feeder can go on now, just because it's out of the way and that's blocked up. That can stay like that for the rest of the day now, and all the bees will start amassing. You can hear their mood has changed. You can hear they're starting to like get a bit agitated. They think something's wrong. Okay. Incidentally, with the other box you move off, if it's cold, screen off the bottom of the box. Because remember, you've removed most of the nurse bees from this colony and you want to give them every help you can to keep going, even though there's not much, not many bees in this box. And if you, put a, if you screen off the bottom uh, ventilation and you do get cold nights, you've just given that colony that little bit of help. It's all about working with the bees, remember, not against them. So uh, I hope this has been a bit of fun for you. I know I've done the videos, but it's an extra way of looking at it from a different point of view. Okay. Bye for now.